We gotta cut this shit down to like 30 seconds, honestly. <laughs> What's up, people? Live from the Good News Radio Station. It's your favorite long intro. Touchdowns and tangents. Shout out to the Good News Radio Station. Shout out to the Good News Sports. Shout out to FBC Radio. Shout out to X Squad Affiliates. Shout out to your favorite podcast app. Shout out to DMX. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. Shout out to... F- totally fucked up my flow. And shout out to you... Kenny Berry, as always, to my right. What's up, man? Um, I'm just happy to be here, man. I could tell. You're over there gleaming. It's been a long week. Yes, definitely. Like, it's been a long year. I just... And that DMX battle. Like, DMX is that uncle who was on crack for sure for like 20 years. And you're just happy to see him, like, breaking even in life. Like, I feel every, that. Every day, is, every day is a struggle in the battle, but it's like... I feel that, but at the see. same time, he was kind of overmatched. We knew it, but especially it's, it's like, with Snoop Dogg having like such a big social media following now and stuff like that. Like, the uncle that smokes that weed and didn't use, didn't trick off all his dope money in the eighties, and the uncle who smoked all his dope money in the eighties. I felt like low key too. Snoop Dogg was like fucking Kobe and that shit. Like let me let me get you a let me let me get let you have eleven. And then I'm gonna just come back and win, anyways. Like, but like I was game point. I'm gonna give you game point and still come back and win. Because I felt like he was rapping with X. Like he, it was all types of good feelings. It was all love. Cause yeah, it's like, it was. They needed that. It's dope. It was like the male version. Also made of me the feel Jill. hella old, bro. Yeah, it was hella like, old. It was like the male version of the Jill Scott. Um, uh, why am I forgetting? The Erica Badu celebration. That wasn't a battle. That was a celebration. <laughs> Like we were just sitting here celebrating, X gonna give it to you, and all. Like Snoop got too many hits, and like I told Michael earlier, um, before they went on the air court time, I was telling Bruce, look, there's really only one person who could probably hang. Like, there's a Jay Z, right? And Snoop could hang with Jay Z. And I said yeah. E forty could hang with Jay Z. Uh, and they're like, no, 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 nah. no. No, see, now you're being disrespectful. Nah. Dude, I'm tired of this shit. We're gonna stop this right nah, now. We I mean, act like E forty didn't have Biggie Smalls in a fucking trunk somewhere because he's being disrespectful. Uh E forty got like thirty years of hits. This nigga puts out two albums a year every year, and they're still fire. Like And a whole Hundred could, people listen to it. Son of a bitch. That's what they said too. <laughs> Look, y'all gonna stop disrespecting Oakland. I'm sorry, man. I love Bay Area music, but because y'all fucking dick. I gotta off be in the mood for it. Oh, you gotta be in the mood for it. Yeah, it's different. I, guess what? I'm from East Oakland. I'm always in the mood for Bay Area music. Anyways, with that, How dare you? How dare you? A lot of shit happened this week with the NFL. A lot of shit adjacent to not a lot of shit happening. I guess you could say. The biggest news this week, ongoing story we've been following, and if it's officially official, but the Washington Redskins, or Deadskins as we call them on this podcast, or Foreskins, are now officially the Washington football team. Wow. Oh, man. Bro, promote the intern whoever came up with that fucking name that Websites have already been calling them for a cool like three to five years. Like shout out to they, whoever made that they, idea. They saved you a bunch of money. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what. To me, it's just kind of lazy because, like I said, most most of the sites were already calling you that. But I get it at the same time because last thing you want to do is rebrand your whole history, like within a two week span. You don't want to do it too fast because. Then you end up with uniforms like the Clippers three years ago, which <laughs> like the NBA Finals record. Oh wait, they don't have one. Okay, that w- that was unnecessary, but all right, I guess. <laughs> so the Clippers, but hey, your thoughts on the the name change? Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh. As long as they don't, I mean, they they're taking the the name off the helmet and putting numbers. As long as they don't change the color scheme, just come up with a different name, or don't call yourself Washington. Call yourself DC, or call yourself the DMV, the DMV, whatever. Ne- never mind. I'm not even giving out free million dollars. I'm not giving out any more free million dollar ideas. 
when Larry Scott still won't listen to my PC3 thing. Uh, and the NFL, yeah, I, I just think it's embarrassing that that's what they're calling them. The the wa- the Washington football team, the WTFs, that's what they are. <laughs> the what the fucks? <laughs> I mean, my rap name is MC What the Fuck. Who'd you Daddy steal that from on Twitter? Who'd you steal that from on Twitter? I saw, I saw, <laughs> a, 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 I saw Will Bond and uh, Tony Korsheim that were talking about it. They're like, they're the WTFs. That's crazy, man. Shout out to PTI, some of the goats. Uh, the other story this week. New York football Jets owner was outed as a racist um, among... Are most old white men racist? I think he's like 75 years old. He's from the UK. He owns like another team as well. But basically what came out was he had issues with a black history event. He had history, history He had issues. issues with women's rights events. For Women's Women's Rights Month, I don't even know what that month is called, but March. <laughs> We're at a protest. A <laughs> we covered a story. <laughs> yeah, man, I was I was a, a branded feminist for like two years. I remember it. I gave you shit about it because I I knew. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's I knew, fucked up. I knew the price of admission, and I was like, you can't pay that. You can't pay that. You can't afford that price. Nah, I was just more of a target on my back. Like, honestly, you get a target from women. You get attacked by men. So I was just like, man, fuck this shit. Nah, it was the Me Too I'm era, too. And you were catching mad heat. And it made no sense. I wasn't catching you mad like, heat. You were catching straight bullets. I was catching. From other people's gunfights. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you sure you want to do this right now? It, I was like a hillside looking at another hillside catching flames. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. Let me do some control burn. Oh, it's going to come over here. This. Yeah, let me oh. get rid of this. But yeah, so the Jets owner, potentially, they're saying, could get pushed out. Jamal Adams, who's already on the trade block, but pretty much came out and said, Wrong is wrong. Everything starts at the top, and kind of you see what you see what you see what my issues have been. So, do you see a situation where he's kind of forced out in the Jets? Because we all know Gary V's been trying to buy that fucking team for like five years. <sighs> Dog, if Gary V buys the fucking Jets, he went on Left Key shows this week talking about it too. Bro, let me explain something to you. If Gary V is allowed to buy the Jets. Diddy gets to buy. Honestly, that's probably what they fucking need though, because he Diddy would fucking disrupt buy, them. No, no, if, he would he would be like Mark Cuban in the NBA. We don't okay. He would disrupt we the fuck out of that whole ownership group. But didn't you? They would fucking hate him. Remember when like I, they hated Mark Cuban for like they probably still hate Mark Cuban. Remember when I said that Cronky would or no. Uh, not Kroenke, but the guy who owns the Clippers would be a great addition to the NFL because he would enrich their way of thinking. You were like, nah, they would never let him in. If they let Gary V's... But Gary V doesn't in, have that kind of money. Exactly. He doesn't have Steve Ballmer. Nobody exactly. has Steve Ballmer. Exactly. That's why it makes no sense. Like, if you're going to let Gary V in, then, like, every black entertainer can sue you now. Diddy can sue you for racism. I don't racism. know about that. Diddy has more money than Gary V. Get the mm. fuck out of here. We can mm. do a poll. I don't know. There's no way Gary V has more money than Diddy. And if he does, that's sad. That's sad. No, man. Let's do a versus battle. Gary V versus Diddy. What the fuck? <laughs> that was the worst shit I've ever nah, heard. That instead, was the worst thing. You know what they do? You know what they do? Instead of like uh, actually playing music, they just hand out pictures of their fucking past tax returns. This man is high over here. I wish. <laughs> I'm high on on the on the what on the WTFs. Wow. They should really just just lean into that. Some intern probably said, "What the fuck?" And they're like, "Exactly." Speaking of what the fuck, the NFL and the NFL PA are going back and forth on COVID negotiations, of course. Some of the things they've been going back and forth are on preseason games, which have officially been nixed for this upcoming season. We've talked about it over the past few weeks. And just for me, it's like you got to have another alternate team. Like you got to add a 33rd team. In order to have enough bodies in the event that injuries happen, because undrafted free agents have been royally screwed. Because how are how are these how are you going to ensure these people are in shape? 
not just that, but we've already talked about how camp can really set you up, you know, for the rest of the season as far as catching on practice squads, you know, catching on as injuries happen, you make relationships, other coaches refer you to other coaches, et cetera, et cetera. So now you pretty much cut out all of that. And I think they also cut the roster maximum for the start of camp from 90 to 80. I believe they should be adding to the roster. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're or not going to give the guys guaranteed, team. you're not even going to give guys guaranteed contracts anyway. Exactly. So you might as well just say, "Look, we'll pay." I you mean, they didn't even want to give daily testing till this week, which was another issue they went back and forth on. Um, and essentially, still the report. Essentially, now what's going to happen is when they go to camp, they're going to be tested, and they're going to be tested. Um, like twice when they first get there and then they'll be tested daily and then eventually the testing kind of cools down once they reach a certain percentile of like not having coronavirus. Uh, you you would, can read more about that. but With football, you would literally have to test guys twice a day. For sure. Once in the morning before and practice. I think, I think that's what it is at training day. camp. I think you do test like twice. Maybe even three there. times. Like... You literally have to test people 14 times a week. And at all these different, uh, like, and people, players were saying, don't trust the team doctors because we need to remind y'all, team doctors work for the team. They're not independent doctors who care about you. They're team doctors. And a lot of them have been there for so long that they're closer to the organization than they are to the players. Uh, Just go look at the Cleveland Browns when everybody was getting MRSA. Google the Charles Bentley's kneecap. Which it actually worked out for him. He's actually doing really well. His leg looked like shit, though. (laughs) His leg looked like death rolled over. I think he said, like, I think he's an entrepreneur now. And he was like, yeah, Yeah. that was like the best thing that happened to me. If that never happened, like, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have figured it out. But then there's Joe Jervicious. There's a couple other people who didn't necessarily. He was already washed. Joe Jervicious. He was washing. That's the one white boy receiver we're not going to disrespect, even though he never hit a thousand yards. But. He was nice. Don't better be than Ricky Pro. First off, better than Ricky Pro out of the slot in Madden. You don't get to say Ricky Pro's name <laughs> unless you have fifteen thousand yards <laughs> to fucking match him. Otherwise, <laughs> shut up. There's Ain't cats nice. in the NFL who are Pro Bowl. Does AB have more receiving yards than Ricky Pro? I'm pretty sure he doesn't. We'll get to AB later. The other issue with coronavirus, so. Here we got every fucking league saying basically not playing with fans, cutting capacity. Lo and behold, the NFL is like, no, fuck that. We're still having fans. We're going to require them to wear masks, but we're still going to have fans. And a lot of the stadiums have cut capacity. I think the Raiders are actually the only team that hasn't cut capacity. So that's going to be interesting, but I, I really don't see it playing out. Do you, Kenny? Mark Davis was like, if there are no fans. I'll fuck with Mark Davis for that because. Like, why, why are we here? Because the fucking, especially in Vegas. Why did I fucking build this stadium? Exactly. Especially because that's a publicly funded stadium. So fans should definitely be there. Like, what, like are you serious? This is like, this is like, this stadium is like, l- it's like a touch of my father's DNA, a touch of God's DNA, um, the tears of like dead the hookers, <laughs> the tears of dead hookers, and um, the devil's mouthwash, which is uh, the soul of. of-